Today I'm going to show you guys how to use continuous lighting with your strobes to create some awesome color effects. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. Find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we are taking you guys behind the scenes, showing you guys the lighting setup of a recent shoot. We were shooting a mermaid and we wanted some like supplemental shots to go with the main shot and uh, what we decided is to kind of get that mysterious feel, I wanted to shoot at a really shallow depth of field. So in this case, we're shooting at 1.4. And I also wanted a lot going on with color and uh, light, but I didn't really want the image to be sharp, almost like it was underwater. Um, it was a mermaid shot, so giving that kind of feel to the image made a lot of sense. So a little bit of motion and you know shooting at 1.4 uh, requires that you don't really use that much light and so what we did instead of using our strobes on the strobe mode we use them with the modeling lights which is totally normal it, you can totally do that if you want you're not going to be able to shoot um, you know at super high aperture like f16 is just not going to be possible with the modeling light but if you are looking for that type of look you can use a modeling light so we're going to show you guys how we did it here in the lighting diagrams and the images that resulted and then i'll show you guys a cool little test so here is our um, images that we actually used for, uh, these are the resulting images of this technique. So this is one of our images, this is our model mermaid here, and uh, this is a, a little sphere of uh, plants. You can actually probably see them behind me now, we've decorated them from, with our studio. But um, this is shot at 140, so you can see this is very out of focus, and um, her eyes are in focus, but by the time it gets to the back of her head, this is out of focus, which when you're shooting with strobes, it's actually not that easy to do. Um, the show, strobes provide a lot of light, which most of the time means you're gonna be shooting at a little bit um, less shallow depth of field. Now, there is motion blur in there. There's a little bit of movement, and you can see it. I didn't even nail the focus right on her face, to be honest. The focus, you can see, is here on her, on her uh, uh, hair, and her eyes are just a little bit out of focus. But this is totally okay. Now, a lot of the time when you're doing like a, a beauty or like a very, you know, a clean product shot, you want your focus to be dead on. You don't want any camera motion movement or anything. Um, in this case, I actually wanted that stuff. So a little bit of motion blur and a little bit of, you know, out of focus was totally okay with me. So we did this a couple different concepts here. We have this image. We have this image, which we changed our lighting a little bit. I'm going to talk to you about that. Um, and we put <laughs> a rope around our subject. And you can see what's going on here. Um, as she's moving her hand, this is not out of focus blur, this is motion blur. So we were using a slower shutter speed along with using a, a low aperture as well. And there we can see everything's getting out of focus. Now, you, her hair is blowing around. Um, we used a fan as well to create that effect. And we've got a fog machine, which is kind of creating this atmosphere in here. Because this was shot in a studio. It's not, you know, not anything really fancy here. All right, our last image we'll show you. Um, this is... it. it, it what it did, it really created a lot more of a sense of like kind of movement because the greatest thing about using modeling lights, in my opinion, is that you see what you're gonna get. It's like you have no question, this is exactly what the camera is gonna pick up, this is what we're gonna get. I think a lot of the time in using um, strobes, it's kind of like a guess. <laughs> the strobes fire and you're like, oh, that's what it looks like. Um, with the modeling lights, you see exactly what you're gonna get, including color temperature and exposure. So it allows you to be a little bit more fluid. And again, we've got um, our subject, you know, kind of reaching towards the sky here. It's a lot of blur in this, but this is the look that we wanted. And uh, I think it came out great. I love these shots. I think they're really, really cool. So let's show you guys the lighting diagram of how we did the shots themselves. This is our camera here. Um, our model's here doing all kinds of crazy things. And we had three different lights surrounding her. We had one light, which is basically a hair light right above her, and that's gelled um, a CTO, color temperature orange, and that created that kind of warmer color. We had another light camera right, and that's going to be creating the, the highlight that's on her face, and that's a little bit warmer as well. So anything that was on her face, we wanted to be a little bit warmer. Now, we also used two of these strobes. These are just um, in seven inch reflectors, and these had color temperature blue gels on them. And this is making everything a little bit cooler. So we can see our background was getting a little bit cooler. Maybe some of the rim light behind her was a little bit cooler as well. And then the light on her was a little bit warmer, especially on her face. Um, and then we've got a nice wind machine there. So that light basically trans to, you, translates to, you can see it here, the blue rim on her face here. It looks like the right one was turned off for this shot. The light above, which is this light here, is shining in her hair right there. A hair light is really important. Um, I've come to find out uh, over the years how much difference a hair light can make. So 
Um, if you guys are in a studio, if you can put a light, even if it's not very high powered, um, coming straight from the bu above, it will add a lot of definition to hair. And then we have our nice light here to the right, which is creating that key look. So this shot is basically the same thing, except the back right light was just turned up a little bit more as far as our brightness goes. So that's our lighting setup, and it was done all using the modeling light. Now, what do we mean using modeling lights? Well, I've got a light here, and I'll just show you what I'm talking about. This is a Einstein. Let's just turn this on. It's on a nice boom, which is great, and that's going to blind me in a second. There we go. So this is our modeling light, and you can see that it's a relatively bright light. As I move it around, it's going to light my face. These are gels. Um, I'm sure most of you know what gels are, but basically it's just a sheet of, you know, like gel plastic, and uh, it's they're great in different colors. This is a color temperature blue gel. Now, if I put the gel directly over the light, you can see two things happen. One is the color of the light changes, which is exactly what we want these lights to do. The gels, that's the purpose. But the second thing you guys are going to notice is that the intensity of the light actually changes as well. You can see this should be a lot brighter. This is going to be a lot less bright. And the reason is because now it has to tra you know, actually travel through a medium that is not opaque, but it's almost there. So you have different levels of gels as well. This is like a one-to-one -one gel. You can also have a quarter gel. You can also have a, a half gel. That's basically how much blue or orange or red or whatever color you want it's going to travel through. So these are the lights that were set up around our model. And you can see just having a few of them. Um, it's really nice. I mean, you can see right now kind of the light that's casted on me. If you want a rim light, you just put the light you know, here above your, behind your model. A hair light's going to be above you, and um, your keys are going to be in front of you. Let's just push that out a little bit there. So that's using these lights. Let's just go ahead and turn that off. But that's basically the entire idea behind the photo shoot. Now, keep in mind, we wanted this. We wanted that motion blur. I was shooting it like 1 20th of a second, which if something's moving around in frame, it's going to be, <laughs> you're going to see a little bit of motion blur. And the other thing is I really wanted to shoot at a shallow depth of field. 1.4. So we didn't want a lot of light coming into the sensor. So we have a little bit of light with a strobe, a little bit of light compared to a strobe anyway, because you know, modeling light's not very bright. A strobe light gets very, very bright. So if you want those sort of things, then using the modeling lights is a perfect way to do your photo shoot. Plus it's a lot of fun because you can see what you're doing. So guys, that's the end of the episode. Tell me, how have you guys used constant lighting in your photos? Have you used modeling lights for your lights? Have you used lamps? I mean, lamps count too, right? How have you used constant light in your photos to create the looks that you wanted to? And when did you make that decision to go from strobe to constant lighting? Thanks so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you liked me watching around <laughs> my robot lamp. I'll learn you guys later. Bye, everyone. Did it blow your mind? Was your mind blown? Oh, my God. My mind just got blown just then. <laughs> I know. I wonder if I touch this with my tongue if I'll die. <laughs>